Namaste, Star Family. Welcome back to the Matrix Oracle. This is a new pick a card reading in honor of the full moon in Taurus, November 15, 2024. So the Full moon, working with the moon, is the high priestess energy. And through this expression and culmination of this cycle, we are realizing and quantum leaping into a highest timeline where we realize that our place of joy, of happiness, is what creates the way. It's what opens up those gateways. So I decided to pick three different decks of cards um, with the High Priestess to decide on the pile. So we're going to decide pile number one, pile number two, and pile number three. Okay, let me put this a little bit on the side so we can look at those zodiac placement. I'm going to show you the High Priestess cards, and I would suggest when it's a moon reading um, to look at your personal moon placement. Okay. There we go. All right. <laughs> Interesting <laughs> setting, but okay. All right, so pile number one with this High Priestess here. Okay. We have the Gemini archetype, so Gemini, we have Pisces, we have Aries, and we have Cancer. Okay, for pile number two of this High Priestess, we have Aquarius, we have Capricorn, we have Leo, and we have Sagittarius. Beautiful. And pile number three with this High Priestess. We have a Libra. We have Virgo. We have Scorpio. And we have a Taurus. Beautiful. All right. I will see you there. Hi, pile number one. Welcome to your pick a card and messages for this full moon in Taurus. You chose the beautiful high priestess of this deck. There's some type of strong illumination of the crown, a lot of gold energy, and this huge crescent of the moon. Hmm. Something that's growing. Is your happiness growing? Is your sense of self-love is growing? If you choose according to your zodiac placement, I strongly suggest the moon as it is a moon reading. But again, you can look at any placement or pick a card or pile. We have uh, Pisces, Cancer, Aries, and Gemini. Okay, so let's first pick those cards. Then we'll ask some questions. Okay. Some dragon energy. It's here. And some fairy energy. Ooh. Okay. All right. I'll keep my energy moon card for questions. Okay. Let's see what we have for you. So first, boundary stones, negotiation, contracts, and communication. Then we have the cave, retreat, time out, self-care, and slow down. Remember what I said about self-love for you? Mm -hmm. Then we have the green gold dragon from Sirius. Brings universal knowledge to your spiritual pathway. Learn about spiritual technology. Be a transmitter of sacred knowledge. I love, love, love this. A lot of green for you, pile number one. A lot of, oh, well, you know, Taurus is an archetype that is connected to Venus, which connects, if you're working with your life force, your Kundalini, to your heart center. So a lot of heart center, a lot of heart healing that's occurring for you to quantum leap into your happiest timeline. Okay, your happiness is the path. It's what creates the path. And we're going to get 
some messages about you creating more of that feeling. Okay. Then we have from the fairies. Catch me. Trust, surrender, leap of faith into the unknown. Mm. And the dark moon. Maturation, growing up, introspection, know thyself. Okay. Right off the bat, I can feel for you that this Scorpio new moon cycle that started November 1st is asking you to build up some strong boundaries. The theme of the Scorpio new moon is all about unbecoming. And it's interesting when I said you can choose according to your uh, zodiac sign. I said pile, but I said also pick a card. So some of you, I'm going to list it and you can see it either up there or down there. Okay. Um, the new moon in Scorpio. Um, I feel that there is something for you in this pick a card reading that might hint to you some of the beginning of the things that need to let go of. There is this spiritual awakening that is coming through this phase, realizing maybe a part of you that you didn't honor, a loving part of yourself, or just how lovable you are. If you are struggling with energy boundaries, my dear pile number one, I was in your shoes, okay? Strong, strong <laughs> sponge, empathetic uh, sponge, I was. <laughs> I feel like I'm speaking like Yoda. Um, and I really had to find some solutions for myself. And what has been the most effective in my life has always been sound. I've studied music. I've always done music. I, music is in my family. It's always been present in my life. And I created this super empath playlist to help me to decipher what was the energy that was mine and what was not. I could literally be influenced by the energy of family members that were miles and miles, continents away, just through their feeling. That's how much I was connected, but not in the best way. You know, it was like literally affecting my, my thought patterns and things like that. So I'm going to list this as well for you. And if you don't find it up there, that means I always describe everything um, in the description box below. I'll tell you why, because I can only put, uh, I think, five uh, links up there, okay? Work with the super empath. You can fall asleep to it, okay? And just let the playlist play. Um, it will help you. It will help you. You might have some certain dreams that help you understand your deepest self. Because I feel your invitation here for you for you to find your true happiness. And that means that what makes you happy, not others. There's a strong message here of not needing or having to please others. And it's important. And I find it interesting because in the Zodiac Wheel, uh, the, um, the first degrees of Gemini, they actually speak of people-pleasing tendencies and having to learn how to stay in your power. So that's something that I feel I want to share with you, just really stay in your power. Some of you, if you are already in, in that space where you have built up those boundaries, there's definitely some type of revelation that wants to be acknowledged. A lot of darkness here. I wouldn't be surprised. It could be a specific archetype okay recently i think it was with saturn moving direct actually occurring exactly on that full moon the energy of lilith came up strongly lilith is an archetype that helps you heal the parts of yourself that have been shame and guilted is there anything like that mm? okay so let's deep dive into this energy and we're going to ask questions especially about this aspect of yourself that might be just, you know, dimmed out or that you're dimming, that you need to shed the light on. Especially, what does it say here again? I have to see. Brings universal knowledge onto your spiritual pathway. 
Learn about spiritual technology. Mm, be a transmitter of sacred knowledge. It might be something, I, I feel for, for you, maybe something that is part of a gift that has to do with sacred geometry, sound, frequency. Let's see if we can get some details. So what is this hidden aspect? Oh, wow. Men holding a coin. And the hostilities. Interesting. Is there a conflict within yourself? Pile number one. As far as being able to allow yourself to shine. I feel I really need to reorganize everything here. Even to that level. Yep. 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 Okay. Yeah. There seems to be some dissonance between your belief systems and the things you've experienced. Now, every time I pull the um, helmet or any car that has a helmet, I always think about Orion star seeds because they have a lot of capacity to um, have focus with their mind, a lot of mind control, a lot of things that you know through controlling your mind, uh, not letting your emotions affect you. And I feel as some of you, that's part of the boundaries. Maybe there's too much influence from the heart field. You're letting... Um, things influence your heart. And when you do, then you start magnetizing through, through your heart field, which is the strongest field. You start magnetizing and creating a field that is more in alignment with other people's desires versus yours. Mm. Okay. If you want some frequencies, I would suggest Orion frequency if you struggle with seeing yourself or who you are. In this frequency, I put a lot of support to create this alchemy of the third eye, okay? Um, let me just make sure that I timestamp this as well. And Orion, yep. Okay, so Orion frequency can help if you struggle with maintaining your field. And I would say at night, you can work with the super empath and you can work this with uh, active meditation, breath work, especially here. Even though it says Cyrus here, I feel as some of you, there's something about your connection to the stars, your connection to, uh, yeah, to your um, personal birth chart that's going on. Wow, it just feels very heavy. I needed a breath. I needed to relax. Some of you, I, I feel that part of your happiness is also surrendering. If you need something that helps you calm your nervous system, you can use the surrender is the portal frequency. I know I'm listing a lot of things for you, pile number one, but I do feel that... Um, this is something that maybe you haven't tried in the past or maybe you don't realize because if you are so receptive to energies, so influenced in your field by your emotions, then sound is going to be your savior. I, I That has been my case. I can see it through uh, my personal sessions, my clients, the feedback and reviews. This is so supportive. So I feel that here, part of your manifestation, physical manifestation because of the coins, might be influenced by other people's field. And we received a lot of that um, healing already, okay? You're, you're, when you start creating a field that is protected, you'll be able to tap into your cave, because I feel like some of you, it's untapped potential. Pile number one, this message for this full moon is trying to help you tap into a potential of yours that is still 
I wouldn't say fully dormant, but that has been not yet fully unleashed. That's the word. Okay, it's not dormant. It's like a part of you knows it's there, but it's getting a lot of contradictions vibrationally and it's creating, it's not allowing it to fully spark. Okay, so I feel that now I want to move on to sparking up that potential. Now that we talked about this first phase. Okay, so let's see what we have here. I don't know why it feels like the fairies. How can we support pile number one to spark up this untapped potential, unleash it? If we get some details about this potential, that would be great as well. Ooh, I mean, you cannot make that up. Golden gift, magical help is on its way. It's something that you intuitively, I feel it, some of you, you kind of already know. But you need the support and this full moon is going to give it to you. It's going to help you. It's going to help you. Let's see if the dragons can help with this activation. I love the dragon energy to tap into the nervous system. Ooh, this one fell and I'm going to look at it. Black dragon from Saturn. We talked about Saturn. Go and check out the Saturn reading. Um, pile number one. This is an urgent message from divine timing. Wow, you're getting a lot. I feel like some of you that happen to just find this reading, maybe you're new to the channel, so there's a lot that wants to come forward. I feel, I feel uh, energies that I haven't felt before. And it says, brings you wisdom through spiritual discipline. Mm, concentrate. Focus on your ultimate vision. Congratulate yourself. You have passed a test. Okay, that's great. Some of you working with this energy of the full moon, using maybe some of those frequencies or whatever you resonate with, that spiritual discipline is going to allow you to tap into this gift. This gift is granted by spirit. And this gift that allows you to manifest and quantum leap into your most fulfilling timeline is through your spiritual discipline, is through your spiritual dis dedication. Then we have, oh my God, so much gold for you. White gold dragon from Lyra connects you to the highest Christ light. Develop your casual chakra bathed in ninth dimensional Christ light. Okay, so... Um, some of you, it's just with all this gold is tapping into divine intelligence. This is something um, that has been untapped fully that you may have felt has been there in that cave energy. And the universe is inviting you to trust and leap into that quantum field. And the only way that I can support you to leap into quantum field is for frequencies. Okay. Definitely listen to um, the, um, the super empath at night. And I would say if you want something longer, then you can play the Starseed playlist. You will have Orion. You will have Cyrus. I don't have a connection to Lyra frequency yet, but you'll have the Pleiades. Uh, you'll have a new Earth miracle. Yeah. So that's, I'm going to list the playlist as well. Okay, uh, star scene playlist. Mm -hmm. Okay, can we get some more details about this full pile number one? Granted gift from spiritual, you know, dedication, devotion, discipline. Can we get some more details for pile number one? Your quantum leaping. That's like, that's so huge. That's, remember how you had a block in your manifestation, in your money, and how I said this, this is because you're going to love yourself more. And some of you, you might not realize, but being too empathetic and not having energy boundaries keeps you from seeing your true self. And when you don't see your true self because you're influenced by other people's thoughts, other people's feelings, other people's judgment, labeling, and life experience, 
You can't open those doors. They're within. This gold is within you. Wow. Oh, okay. Magician and the mirror. There's going to be a, some type of um, mirror effect. You know what's interesting is that I feel the energy of the North Node. This is something I'm going to ask of you if you are, um, you know, really resonating with this. Go look at your North Node placement, what zodiac sign, and go and listen to the message for your North Node. Why do I say this? The collective North Node is in a placement that speaks of relationship, how um, we manifest our relationship based on our beliefs, our feelings, our thought patterns. So there's something here for you, a, a message from spirit that goes deeper. Yeah, definitely beautiful energy. You're going to start realizing that what you create within is created without. Before, I feel that there was a lot of influence from the outside on your reality, on your creativity, um, and that was part of your lessons on the spiritual path. You learn a lot through this path. So don't feel like, oh, I wasted time. Um, again, with the energy and notion of time, the Saturn reading feels very appropriate. You needed what you needed. You needed those detours to tap into this gift in greater ways. Yeah, look at this. You're going to have a very deep cleansing. Very deep cleansing of your belief system, of your life. I would say like this is like a total shift. Um, some of you, it's not going to resonate for everyone, but there might be some type of uh, relationship dynamic that ends and that could lead to a certain relationship ending. It could be just also attracting certain relationships based off the old self that you were, someone that was overgiving, over people pleasing, trying to fit in into the matrix of society, of their family system, and things like that. Yeah, you're 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 totally changing this, and that's your pathway to happiness. It's it's really seeing the true love that you are for all this type of energy, and your spiritual dedication gives you that. That is probably what's going to make the whole difference. And I'm hearing even something that I have for you. It's something along the lines. I, I kept it. Something about success. Yes. Su success hits different when nobody believed you in you. There you go. That's what I feel. And it was not that you were not capable, pile number one. It was that there was a lot of influence from the womb, from uh, things you inherited, from things that you thought you were based off the beliefs of your surrounding, your community, the time we live in, and things like that. So that's, I'm really excited about you tapping into this gift. If that is you drop me below a little door. I will know. I will know it's you. I will know. And I will send you even like greater blessings your way because this feels like such a celebration for you at this level on your journey. Remember you guys to like those videos. It supports the channel to grow. So thank you so much for being part of this spiritual journey with me. I'm sending you many cosmic blessings. Nice. Hi, pile number two. Welcome to your messages for this full moon in Taurus. This is all about your happiness and quantum leaping into this new era where joy creates those opportunities. Very interesting how I start <laughs> every pile very differently. Um, there was something while I was getting ready, by the way, that I want to share um, about camera about picture, maybe some of you it's about holding a vision or having a photographic memory. There's something about images or maybe your image. Mm. If you chose this pile according to your zodiac placement, we have Aquarius, Capricorn, Leo and Sagittarius. I strongly suggest your moon placement. But again, 
up to you. Let's see what we have for you as far as this path, this happiness, this gateway, this image. <laughs> Can we get some messages for pile number two? Okay. About their happiness and how this energy is what creates the field for everything that they desire. Oop, okay, all right. I want to stop here for a second and look at this dragon. Air and water dragon helps you connect to higher frequencies. Trust your intuition, develop your psychic abilities, be open to enlightenment, and express your inner song. Interesting. So there's a lot of suggestion. Working with vibration is maybe you're highly sensitive to sound, pile number two, and that can really be supportive of you um, opening up timelines, gateways, being sensitive to how sound affects you some of you that are not new to this channel okay and you've worked with some of my frequencies you know this is something that i highly uh resonate myself with sound seems to just put me in those meditative places have access to certain things i would feel for you if that's the case you might want to even play a game with yourself and pause this reading i don't know why i'm saying all this but I will indulge again. <laughs> um, and I would pause and go and listen to the moon frequency. Okay? And see, after the, the meditation, come back to the reading and see if there is things that you felt, images that are in alignment with what is going to come through for this. I feel maybe this is why there was like something about images. Some of you... This is going to be a little spiritual game to trust your intuition, develop your psychic gifts. And maybe there is a specific element that you're going to receive through this uh, meditation with the moon that is going to occur right there. Okay. And I feel like that's part of your activation. Oh, that is so freaking cool. If you're trying this and... Uh, especially if some synchronicity happened, let me know. But put a moon down there, okay? Put a moon and I will know it's you and that you played along <laughs> with this little uh, psychic activation game. Yeah. Yeah, allow yourself to do things like that. I feel that some of you... Okay. <laughs> this is something that came up uh, recently in some uh, personal sessions where I was sharing how working with the energy of wonders, what I mean by this is like working with the energy of synchronicity. You can milk that energy when you allow yourself to give, um, you know, certain little symbols. I remember doing this a lot at the beginning of my spiritual awakening, um, where I would, you know, set, for example, a goal and I would tell the universe, okay, when this is coming closer into manifestation, make this appear. And I would choose like very complex <laughs> uh, things. And I would be always amazed by how this would manifest. And then I would just drop it. But it would be so fun. And that, I feel, is part of the games that the universe wants you to play with, to open up to whatever we're going to channel here. Okay, so let's see what we have. Wow be the mountain slow and steady foundation patience so for example like i'm going to share this with you but i just moved into my first home okay i'm still in the process of signing and getting furniture and everything um but it's in the mountains <laughs> so that's something for you guys that is a great illustration that i wanted to share with you okay so there's something about working with magic because as part of the elementals you have here air and water your thoughts and your emotions play with those and play with magic the ether 
element with the mountains, the rock, the minerals. Let's see what else. The temple, the wisdom within, quieten external noise. Oh my God, I love this. Some of you, I'm going to invite you to the Starseed Rise Up membership. I used to call this my temple, the temple meditation. It used to be on Instagram, but now I moved everything on YouTube. Um, there might be a specific meditation um, that could... Let's see if we can get hmm, some type of meditation guidance let's see let's see if if i pull something here there could be some alignment here <clears throat> the garden and the gate wow look at this she's wearing the key to her personal happiness so what i'm seeing here that some of you, you have to realize that sound and frequency helps you tap into the field of magic. And when you tap into the field of magic, you tap in your own psychic and maj majestic and magic abilities that are opening up gates. Some of you, you might be um, working with grid work, uh, creating grids, to help you align to a certain frequency, to a certain energy, to a certain desired goal. Yeah, some of you, I'm inviting you to work with grid magic. And what I mean by this, uh, picking a sacred geometry, it comes up sometimes in, um, in my readings, personal readings, where I uh, suggest, you know, maybe working with the Ankh, working with a certain symbol, a certain rune, um, something like that. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. And there was another card. <sighs> yes. Goddess of the moon. You, you have, you, you know, the moon planet is connected to the high priestess. But in tarot, the moon card is also associated with Pisces, which is associated with the dreams, the subconscious, the Akash. Some of you, you might not realize, but that's part of you creating your path to happiness is working with tools of magic, working with vibration, working with frequency, working with sacred geometry, and also working with the cycles of the moon. This brings that inner child out to play. This brings out the synchronicities with the universe. Let's bring the fairies into the mix. <laughs> oh, wow. Look at this. Oh, my. This is about prophecy. This is divination, seeking out and finding answers. This is how you find your answers. This is how you find your way. This is how you, you the path opens up because this type of energy work makes you happy. You, um, I would say some of you, you might have... Um, some strong lineage with working with magic, uh, you know, alchemy, understanding energy work, understanding um, the philosopher's stone, understanding alchemy of the soul. Yeah. And I would say that part of you including meditative practices, magical practices, having an altar, having a space, a special space for your retreat or a special time also in the day. It just aligns you to your happiness. So oh, now let's look at what is this path, okay? Now we're, we just got messages about how you get there and you had like this little psychic game 
Okay, with the moon card also, the moon frequency, very strong energies you have, my dear ones. Pile number two. Let's see if we can tap into this path. Is there something we need to know or we can discover about this path to happiness? What makes you happy? What makes pile number two happy? Oh, wow. Fairy lovers, new love, courtship, romance, falling in love. Love. Some of you, maybe you have experienced very dualistic relationships. And what I mean by this, I feel like, you know, a lot of um, drama that can be connected to your relationships. If you've experienced a lot of drama, I would suggest some of you, if you are part of the star membership family, uh, the goddess reading with Melpomene. Melpomene is a goddess, an amuse that works with tragedy, that works with theater, and um, she could have some messages right now for you to alleviate some of that old energy. Yeah. So maybe some of you, part of your biggest, you know, uh, goal, vision, image is to be in a partnership, in a loving partnership, but I feel that it extends to all relationships. So pile number two, a lot of love energy, creating love is part of your path, is part of what makes you happy. And you would say like, yeah, it's, it's you know, it could be for everyone. But I feel like for you, it's like, it's more. It, there's something here that is more. Maybe because you didn't feel that. Maybe some of you felt um, unloved as a child or rejected, abandoned. There could be some wounds around that. We have here the scrying. Trust your visions, mm, intuition, and plant seeds. Very interesting. Another gift. Some of you, again, another gift that is very connected with um, divination arts, uh, esotericism, being very mystical. Um, I feel that some of you, that was part of the first message before I even said the cards. I simply had that message from having my phone as part of this image of your reading. And right away, I was like, there's something about an image. And this is here. It's the image is really your vision. Some of you, you have visions of sharing an intimate moment or an intern from a different space, time, and it's saying, trust this because that makes you happy. You've had this in your heart and in your inner sight for a long time because that's part of your path. That's part of what is meant and waiting for you. And some of you may already be uh, on its way or have manifested that. Okay, so let's... Hmm. No. <laughs> I feel like some of you also take the time. Sometimes you need to take extra time for yourself or extra time for listening closely to your intuition. Do it. Do it. You might be someone that needs oh, a lot of uh, time for yourself to recharge. Um, I, I feel a little bit of an introvert energy here. But when you do this, this is actually how you nourish your energy that opens up those doors. And if in the past there was a tendency to feel your time with people and drama and they, like that was keeping you from aligning to your timeline that was going to lead you to your most happy, fulfilled self. Wow. Did some of you look for a rainbow as a sign? I don't know why, but I just feel it, you know. Some of you, if that's like drop me a moon with, <laughs> with the rainbow. Even though it's a sun, this sun looks a little bit like a full moon. But it says, brings the leap of joy that opens new doors. Oh my God, have trust. Rediscover wisdom. Expect miracles and accept opportunities. Okay. You're definitely someone that has a deep connection to spirit. Pile number two. If you need to heal some of your old relationships, broken hearts, 
work with the rainbow frequency. Okay, if you don't see it up there, because I, <laughs> I suggest a lot of things in those readings, um, please make sure that you look in the description box below. The Rainbow Bridge is one of my greatest um, frequency as far as bridging the gap um, with how we feel, you know, about ourselves. And some of you, I don't know why, but I'm going to mention it. If you have a loved one that passed and you felt a lot of ache and pain in your heart, grief, and you have a hard time connecting with that person, the Rainbow Bridge is a great frequency for that. Yeah. Okay. So part of your happiness is love, is a vision of love that you've always had. It's something that has been in your heart. Okay, and with this, the financial constraint, it's there. Some of you, finances, the wealth is connected to your self-worth. You might have a second house placement that is acting up here. Uh, that could be a Chiron wound, that could be uh, some type of retrograde, or that could even be uh, Muse Melpomene um, that could be playing out in this case. There's something here that you need to bridge is probably how certain relationships made you feel about yourself. Yeah. And that, and when you overcome and transcend this, then you're able to tap into that manifestation, you know. Let go of how those relationships made you feel. Those, uh, the ones especially with the number 13 relates to, um, in the zodiac wheel, people pleasing. If some of you try to always make, I feel like some of you, it's like you wanted so much this vision of love that you try to harmonize relationships that were uneven and that cost you a lot on your self-worth, you know, in, in the fear of losing those dynamics, relationships, creating, uh, you know, uh, drama or being the, the, the one that creates, you know, a conflict, an argument. Yeah, that's, you're moving away from this. That's beautiful. Wow, look at this. The sun. You're going to really start appreciating yourself your power, from all this energy that you spend more on yourself. I told you, pile number two, I feel that you spending energy uh, within is highly beneficial to you. To see yourself in a different light, in a different glow. This, the sun energy is connected to your third eye. Oh, your image. The way you perceive yourself, but the way others are going to perceive you. There might be a certain image of yourself that um, you want to manifest a certain character, a certain vision of your life. And this full moon in Taurus is definitely helping you reorganize um, some of the old, letting it go, integrating the lessons so you can finally step into that phase of happiness, of uh, feeling that you are blessed. I feel that some of you, it's this, it's like feeling blessed feeling blessed. That was bringing you a lot of anxiety. If some of you were feeling, oh, you know what? Because I was going to ask, like, what could be a frequency that helps you? Some of you, you still feel the anxiety of past relationships. Yes, we have the rainbow bridge, but I do have a pharmacy that has the anxiety. Maybe um, some of you, you, you have a hard time to detach from how people are going to see you or perceive you if you stop, you know, being the version of yourself that you were in the past, let it go. Let it go. You're entering a whole new phase. You're entering a new, whole new phase. We're going to get some messages about this whole new phase uh, once you let go of that perception that you believe others will have of you. I feel like there's an over worrying about how people see you. Mm -hmm. That could be something in your chart, you guys. You could have something that, you know, your public life, your image is your mid heaven. 
you could have certain placement in your midheaven, which is the like the, the noon energy, the highest peak. Okay, maybe some of you, there's something here. Um, and you can have like a sacred geometry, an opposition, a square. Okay, let go of how uh, the worry about how people are going to perceive you. If you go after your dreams, if you are that mystical being, if you share some of your psychic gifts, let go of that. Yeah, let go of that. Stone goddess, unwavering love and support. Mater maternal line. Work with the goddess energy, the goddess within your feminine energy. I would say here it's your receptivity. You see here, it's almost like she's surrendering. Surrendering to the divine. Surrender. Surrender more deeply. Nothing is impossible. Open to the unexpected. You'll find a way. Working with um, goddesses, muses is highly beneficial to you. Um, I feel especially when you have like love partnership, masculine, feminine, yin yang energy, you want to make sure that one doesn't over um, ride the other, the mind doesn't override the heart, the more you tap into your heart, the more you allow yourself to follow your heart and maybe let go of those relationships that made you feel a certain way you'll start seeing how everything is possible. You have also another rainbow energy here. Very strong messages for you, my pile number two. Yeah, I feel that you're going to unlock potential that you didn't think you had in you. Yeah, a version of your life, a version of yourself. There was a lot to remove from your relationship to love here. It could be because of your Venus placement. Some of you, I'm going to suggest the Venus reading uh, that I had, let me see, for Venus in hmm, Capricorn. Okay, we have it in um, here. Let me see what it is. Venus in Capricorn. Yes, align with your success, okay? There might be some messages. I would suggest uh, your Venus placement so you can have some messages more about your love, your heart, things that help you align with your success. That's what I have for you. Wow. On this reading, literally when I said that's what I have for you, it was 2323. The number 23 in the Zodiac is connected to healing abilities. It, you have certain healing abilities, uh, shamanic ways it might be working with vibration. We had this music, sacred geometry, crystal grid, certain esoteric tools. You are meant to use them. Use them. Okay. They're part of your alignment with your success, with your happiness, because happiness, you, the joy that those tools or those expressions of yourself, they're going to manifest everything that aligns with it. That means the relationship that sees you for who you are and appreciate who you truly are and those memories of anxiety they're going to be gone they're going to be removed that's what i have for you please remember to like those readings it supports the channel to grow and i'm sending you many cosmic blessings namaste hi pile number three welcome to your messages about happiness being your path you chose the beautiful high priestess here so there was three high priestess. There is a channel for love that is upcoming, incoming, downloaded. <laughs> if you chose according to Zodiac placement, we have Libra, Scorpio, Taurus, and Virgo. I suggest the moon placement, but again, you can do as you wish. Ooh, I don't know what's going on with my camera. It's blinking. Ooh, is there some... I told you about downloads, blink. That's, there's something through this full moon in Taurus that is being downloaded into you. <laughs> let's, let's get some messages about this. But you know, it also creates a path. Okay, so let's see. There's something about the downloads. <laughs> let's see what we have. There's three cards and we will take them. Okay. 
Not sure why it makes a difference, but it does. <laughs> That's what I love about pick your card readings. They're just so fun. So fun. Okay, let's see what we have. Dragon's Pet. Communication between species, animals, pets, magical companions, and guardianship. Okay. So part of your downloads right off the bat, I... The bat? Okay. Pile number three, if this is you, drop me a bat. <laughs> a little bat. There's something about sonar energy. There's something about you receiving it through vibrational field. Your happiness is something that you're going to have to navigate through your senses. And animals, nature, especially animals, their representation, their symbolism are highly part of you manifesting that path to your ultimate happiness. Because happiness, it's like the energy leads you there because it's really the energy that creates the path. When you're happy, everything that unfolds is streaming from this essence. Yeah. Then we have the cry for nature. Ooh, didn't I tell you? And nature, mourning for something sacred which seems lost. Okay, some of you, pile number three, you need more nature. Nature and witnessing the animals in nature is very important. I know that sometimes during certain phases of the year, we don't go outside as much. I would say even just... Um, you know, watching nature videos or things like that, if it's like a rainy day and it's pouring and you can't get out. There's something about nature that is very important. Now, I do have an album called Your True, Nat Your True Abundant Nature that explains some breath work and that gives you certain binaural beats and frequencies that you can work with. This helps you do psychic healing and surgery is there something that we need to remove so this download can come through let's see beauty's truth mm -hmm. okay very interesting pile number three for you to get it's just like a path the animals and nature and how you breathe, because your breath connects you to the infinite that you are, but also connects you to, I feel like you see how she's without life, without colors. Your life is going to be so colorful, so magical. When you start connecting more with the kingdoms and those messages and your breath, especially your breath, as if it's like creating more life. You see how those wings, hmm, something about your DNA strands, so this is my hair here. Um, you're, you're in a place, I would say with this full moon energy, where working with breath work is going to help you create more life, more life force. You can play this album. I'm going to list it for you. Pile number three. Um, Abundant Nature. You can listen to it. Fall asleep to it. And it will help you. Because all the parts are first creating an awareness of your energy. Then removing what needs to be removing. Then activating your true field. And then expanding it. Okay, I, th those are like beautiful frequencies that you can easily fall asleep to. Okay, let's see. Pile number three and their happiness. Why are they not seeing? You know, I'm going to tell you right off the bat. Again, this bat. Wow. <laughs> right off the bat. I never say that, do I? Okay. There's something about your speech and paying attention to the things that you subconsciously say that are meant to reveal to you and associate certain things. I feel for you another thing that can help you if you suffer from depression. 
I have my pharmacy playlist where you have many symptoms, okay, that you can support. Depression, anger, anxiety, insecurity, fear, if there's any here. And what I remember from part of my spiritual awakening is that I don't know what happened. When I had like my Kundalini awakening, like everything was highly um, emphasized, okay? And everything was bright. The colors were bright, everything. And at some point, I experienced a lot of like dark nights of the soul. And I could literally see how if I let myself spiral down in those lower frequencies, how when I open my eyes, it felt like colors were less colorful. Like I was getting blind, like a bat, but not, <laughs> not in, in the way that, you know, it's like, I feel like working with your vibration and how you feel versus how you look is very important for you. And the animals and nature are helping you restore the proper self-worth self-loving image that you are okay yeah definitely a lot of restoration of your vision of how you feel and focusing on how you feel is very important for you uh my dear pile number three the first chakra with archangel michael again uh very rooted maybe some of you ground yourself uh if you can, and again, if you are in the fall or winter time, maybe that's not as easy, but um, grounding your feet in the soil, your hands, feeling grounded, doing some energy work with uh, groundedness. In my vibrational pharmacy, there is the nine sulfasia, and I include the 396, which is connected to the root chakra. So you might want to work with vibrational alignment. That's my frequency to be in the vortex, the vortex of your desires. And I feel that pile number three, that's one of the messages. You need support uh, from all the other dimensions to receive. It's almost like take advantage of what is given on earth. Take advantage of it so you can allow yourself to connect because you are a bridge between heaven and earth. I have a reading about heaven and earth. That was the 1111 portal. Go and check out this reading if you haven't. Okay, 1111 portal. Definitely, there might be something here that because it's a gateway that can help you retrieve this groundness this this message for you to to take advantage of everything that is given to you around you use nature use the uh, animal kingdom to support uh, your translation of the messages from spirit i think some of you like uh, especially that's too many especially the birds the butterflies Things with wings. <gasps> Angels. Angels. We have adjacent possibilities. Many things are possible. Realize that many things are possible for you. And where you spin your vibration is where you're going. And don't feel overwhelmed if you are watching this and you are in a lower vibration. Just surrender to what is, but do put some things in the background, you know, like that's what I love music. And when I do those readings, sometimes the energies are a little bit challenging, you know, you, you see here, if you have a moon that is in Scorpio, for example, you're totally in opposition with the moon. So there's an opposition with moon and moon. So there could be, so there could be some challenges, if you have your moon in Taurus, for example, then you're going to be smacking that energy where you're really being asked to be on that vibration that is your happiness. And sometimes like, yeah, I want to be happy, but what makes me happy? Okay, so just allow yourself to be with those frequencies, the ones that we suggested, and you'll see 
things will start to shift. Yes, look. Look at all the abundance that wants to come to you. You see? There's maybe, um, <clears throat> maybe some of you are being challenged by um, what's going on collectively. Look at this 1111 portal. Definitely go and check it out. But you, this is a call for you to see yourself with more truth. Whatever you're going through right now, whatever feeling, whatever, uh, I, I don't know for some reason, I feel like some of you, maybe there's a door that closed <clears throat> and you're still lingering or wondering why this door closed or why this door did not open. Realize that it's happening for you. You might want to check out the Saturn reading about divine timing. It's already listed for pile number one. If that's something you want to look into. Yeah. And then we... That was the card here. Quantum entanglement. Okay. Um, some of you, if you are part of the Starseed Rise Up membership, definitely go and align to the new moon in Scorpio. Energy frequency. I work with the fascia. What ties us the most is how we feel about ourselves. I go through the whole album and help literally um, with acupressure point and breath work release some of those feelings. You have those archetypes that are very strong for this pile. So I'm going to put it also um, the new moon, the alignment. This is your quant and if you do not have access, you can play the quantum fascia healing at night with your abundant nature. That's that's why there was a surgery. This energy of surgery. There's something that you're not you're not seeing yourself like you are. Okay, this full moon is removing and whatever door are closing or whatever rejection this is god's protection pile number three say yes you know i remember at some point how i got into the habit that i would get excited about opportunities and when they were turned down the door closed i actually started building this habit where i was getting even more excited about this door closing saying Oh my God, if this door closed and I was excited about this, can you imagine that the door that is meant for me? This got me excited and it was not meant for me. So imagine how much more excitement I'm going to get once the door that is meant for me shows up. And that kept on happening as an energy test from the universe. And then pff, I was mind blown by the door that came up with that you know, as a result. So that's the first part of your message here, pile number three. Let's deep dive deeper. Once you start, you know, getting excited, understanding that life is happening for you, that you're not a victim here. The universe wants to guide you into your most happy, fulfilling energy timeline. Because when you do this, it supports you, it supports life, and life supports life. It doesn't want to destroy. It only removes things that are no longer serving your life force, okay? So let's see what comes once you understand and work with this energy. Once you remove the ties, the emotional ties, I feel a lot of it. Um, remember with this new moon in Scorpio cycle, and now its culmination with the full moon in Taurus, we are unbecoming. There are certain things you believed about yourself or you believe you were attached to or you believe you were influenced by that are no longer, um, that are no longer true. You need to release them. So once you're able to release all of this, what's coming? What is coming? First of all, this it's still laid on the altar. Hand it over, soften, surrender, forgive. If some of you need to uh, work with the surrender is the portal, it's in the pile number one um, description. Why do we need to surrender more? Oh, let's see. Yes, I knew. 
I felt it. Because when you surrender more, you're able to shine a different light. I feel that some of you, you don't realize how much energy costing the things you used to hold on to was to your vibration. Believing certain things, being attached to a certain belief, being attached to a certain outcome and a certain expectation. And when you surrender and you're actually coming from an energy space that says, life is happening for me. Every door that closes is meant, it's meant to close because there's something greater for me. And just being happy with this, this type of receptivity with the universe, with source energy is going to give you back. Just that is part of a gift. A gift that's going to make you more magnetic. And when you become more magnetic, then remember all the adjacent doors that were there? You're going to start seeing a shift in what doors are opening up for you. It says with the deep blue dragon, keeps you safe by clearing your pathway. Trust that you are protected. Walk on a path of light. Um, you're being called to, you know, manifest a life that is led by spirit. Pile number three. Very spiritual. Um, and instead of forcing and holding on, you know, like no pain, no gain and, and having to work harder, life is teaching you the soft way, the most magnetic way, which is more feminine. There's probably here with this channeling, some feminine energy healing, some sacred feminine energy healing. Can we get some details about this healing here? Oh, door to personal healing and happiness. You can open up that gateway to your happiness when you soften. Your empathy, your receptivity, your intuition is what leads the way. Remember the bat again and again, working like a sonar. But in order to be guided, you're going to have to be silent within. You're going to have to surrender. You're going to have to create peace within. Yeah. Light the darkness, ancestors, ancestral lineage, generational shift. You might have been someone that is born in an environment. Uh, there's a lot of messages going on. Sorry, you guys. <laughs> um, in, an, in, a, in a family where you had to break the chains of certain habits. That might be why we saw all the quantum, the quantum fascia being influenced that could create repetition in a certain cycle. But right now with this woman in Taurus and all that you've heard, you're going to be able to shift it. You're going to be able to tap into a certain knowledge. A certain knowledge. Oh, look at this. Secret knowledge. Keeper of secrets. This is not any knowledge. Okay. And you know what? I will tell you, I already feel that part of you breaking those karmic chains, you detangling, untangling, all this type of work, working with uh, the animal kingdom, uh, working with nature, you working with breath work, all those guidance that we heard, surrendering, uh, tapping into your feminine energy. This is, there's a specific way for you to rehearse this that has been meant for you. And you know what? Ugh, this is so interesting. Some of you, if you haven't watched, watched? <laughs> Maybe some of you, you need to rewatch. Okay. Um, the discoveries of the witches. What I feel, why do I say this is because of those cobwebs and how she was. I feel that you had almost, um, how do you say this? You had almost like, um, dimmed or locked in your own abilities 
only to be awakened at a specific time, and this time is now. If some of you haven't watched the series, please do. This, there's, there's some magic that you are activating, but it comes from tapping into your intuition, messages, clues, very mystical energy that you're meant to embody now. Okay, so that's what I have for you, pile number three. What a journey! <laughs> You definitely are on the ascension path. Welcome to it. Um, I trust this supported you. If it did, please give it a thumbs up. I'm sending you many blessings and much love and light. Namaste. <laughs>